All right, so I had a few questions from some students about uh, what was the purpose with this AEM-251 combined loading lab development. Let's talk a little bit about combined loading and then I'll talk to you about what I'd like for you to do this semester to help us for future semesters. So what combined loading is, is um, if we have a combination of maybe tension and torsion or tension and bending on a uh, structure, and there's different ways that we can get that. Here's a simple way if we have an arm that's hanging off the side of this, this bar, this round bar, and we put a force right here. Well, if we were to do the statics, we can simplify this structure by removing the arm and replacing that arm with an equivalent force and a torque that would be equal to the force times the distance from the centroid of the cross section to that applied force. And so that force and that torque is an equivalent force coupled system. Now this bar is still fixed over here. If we wanted to find out what the reactions were back at the wall, we would do another free body diagram. Here are the forces in the front. And in back, to keep this in equilibrium, we'd have an equal and opposite torque, an equal and opposite force running up the bar. And in addition to that, we would have a bending moment. And let me put that in a different color. That bending moment would go to act to put the bottom of the bar in compression. It would push out from the top and push into the bottom that bending moment M, it's kind of hard to draw that. The value of that bending moment would be the force times the length of this bar. All right, so in this problem now, we have a transverse shear force. We're going to calculate stress from VQ over IT. We have a bending moment, calculate stress from MY over I, and we have a torque, and we calculate stress from the torque times on the outside of the bar, diameter over two divided by the polar moment of inertia. So if we were interested in a spot uh, on this bar up at the top, interested in the stress state there, we would have that in this picture right here. Let me draw it down here. If this is the axis of the bar, this line that I'm going to draw, come down this way, we would have a tensile stress from the bending moment is equal to that bending moment times the diameter over 2 divided by the bending moment of inertia for a, a round bar it's pi over 64 diameter to the fourth now if it's a hollow bar or you subtract off the pi over 64 uh, inside diameter to the fourth We would have some shearing stress from the torque. I'll put that in blue. See how the torque comes around this way in the front. We'll draw a couple little arrows. That means that the shearing stress goes in that direction on that side. And because of equilibrium, we know how to pencil in the rest of the shearing stress arrows. The value of that shearing stress then would be the torque times the diameter over two divided by the polar moment of inertia or a circular cross section, of course, that's pi over 32 diameter to the fourth power. And then uh, this transverse shearing force it has the value of the force F because of equilibrium. Well, if we have a point on the top of the bar, the Q area is zero. So we don't get any contribution to the shearing stress at the top of the bar from that uh, shear force V. Now, we had an apparatus that was kind of shaped like this. It was a tube. It wasn't a solid bar, but it was a tube. It has an arm on it, and we applied some weights to it. Um, but over the, the years, the semesters, it, uh, the, the, the instrumentation, the strain gauges that were on it, that were kind of in this location back here, strain gauges that were on it uh, deteriorated, and I haven't had a chance to fix it. So what I'm going to ask your semester to do is each group meaning uh, however your lab TA breaks you up into groups, I want you to design 
an experiment for combined loading that will use the uh, what we have in the lab as far as the the weights it has to be a reasonable amount of weight we don't want to put uh, 100 pounds on this thing we want to keep the weight uh, you know this force f we want to keep it to um, we want to do probably increments of five to two to five pounds let's say two pound increments with a max of uh, probably 20 pounds. We want to keep it reasonable in case it, something were to break, it wouldn't uh, make too big of a noise or hurt anybody. Okay, so um, we'll have that as a limitation for your design. The other limitation is, you know, the, the aluminum uh, plates that are on your desks. They have all of these holes that I've drilled into it whatever you design needs to be able to be mounted to this. I can't remember, but I think they're four inch centers and they're quarter inch bolts. Uh, you'll have to measure those in the lab. So whatever this is, you know, you have to design some kind of mechanism back here, some sort of clamping block that will hold this in place. We're gonna need to know this length L. We're gonna need to know the distance of this arm. And we need to know what sort of strains that we can expect including principal stresses that don't exceed the material yield strength. We want a safety factor of at least two for our uh, design. Against yielding. So do you want to use steel? Do you want to use a steel tube? Uh, do you want to use an aluminum tube? Um, all these things are things that you're going to have to think about now the tube is to get the strains high while the weight and the material cost is reasonably low it's very efficient uh, so let's make a list let's make a new page okay and your design doesn't have to look like mine it just needs to have some sort of combined loading it can be combined tension and torsion or torsion and bending or what have you uh, typically torsion and bending is is very easy to to design but uh, just for purposes of having me uh, sketch something up here for you to look at let's say we have the something like this you know how are you going to attach this arm to this tube you'll have to think about that um, do you want a hole right here or maybe a couple different holes so you can try different lengths Take a look at the old uh, lab handout for combined loading. You're gonna have to design some sort of clamping system. You know, I don't know, maybe something that goes around here and uh, holds that with these bolts to the table. Okay, so uh, physical design. We want lengths, dimensions, and so forth. So I want something I can take to the machine shop and say, hey, this is how you're gonna make this and this is what it needs to look like. Uh, we need to know the material. You know, and you know, it can be steel, it can be aluminum, it could be anything. You know, keep the cost reasonable. Uh, it could even be plastic. You know, like a PVC pipe. Uh, we might make more than one of these different setups. So it'd be very interesting. We're going to need to know the location of a strain gauge rosette. Your lab TA can show you a strain gauge rosette. We'll talk about it in class a little bit. So a rosette is a pattern of three strain gauges. And do we put them like this? Or do we orient them at some other angle? And um, we'll need to know the size of the strain gauge rosette. If you go to the website, if you do a Google search for Vichet micro measurements, there are different sizes and patterns of strain gauges, and they're for different materials. So a an aluminum strain gauge rosette would be different than one that would be used for steel. The size would be the same, but the composition is a little bit different. So I want you to specify that. Um, and then, uh, of course, the, the weight. 
and I want you to calculate the strain on the strain gauges that those would read. And of course, uh, you need to know the material properties, you know, based on whatever it is. Are you going to need to use a 6061 T6 aluminum or a 2024 T4 aluminum alloy? But we want a safety factor of at least two on yielding for the material. So you need to look up the yield stress. And, you know, you have to calculate the principal stresses in order to do that. Um, let's see, let me think if there's anything else. Um, I think that's about it. I think you'll learn a lot from this little project. And, uh, you know, even, even things like how big does this hole need to be? Uh, what are we going to use to attach the weight pan? What is the weight pan going to look like? Um, we're going to use a wire or a cable or a clip. Or, or whatever, some kind of hook. All of those things need to go into the design of this type of uh, uh, combined loading experiment. Like I said, I think you're going to learn a lot from this thing. I think it's going to be interesting. We're going to talk about, talk about combined loading stress calculations in class. All right, hopefully that helps.